Ever since O'Malley's debut on Dana White's Contender series in 2017, Sean O'Malley's been a subject of widespread attention. Even to date, the highlight reels of his first round knockout victory over Alfred Kashakian makes UFC's highlight reels. The current UFC bantamweight champion is an American professional MMA fighter and one of the most exciting fighters in the UFC with a 17 to 1 record. Sugar Sean is a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but likes to strike much more than grapple on the floor. He has one submission win in 12 knockouts, four in the UFC, that clearly indicate his love for striking. O'Malley, a very exciting mixed martial arts fighter, has a lot of striking attacks. Like Given his 1 to 0 record in professional boxing, it makes all the more sense. Sean's competed for a few different promotions, but his most notable was for Quintet Ultra, where he helped to represent the UFC in a tournament. By the end of that tournament, the UFC representatives were declared the winner. 29-year-old Sean was born on the 24th of October 1994 in Helena, Montana, in the United States of America. He was raised alongside his three siblings, Mikkel, Daniel, and Michela. Although most information about his parents has been kept away from the public, his father, Dan, is a retired narcotics officer who's an MMA enthusiast. Growing up, school for Sean was not what he enjoyed, and for someone who got in so much trouble, he never understood why he needed to go. O'Malley saw the world in black and white, and didn't understand why he needed to fill his head with all of these things. He would forget the moment he walked out of the door. Sean says, At that time, in my mind, I thought, This is pointless. I don't like what we're learning. I thought it was a waste of time and thought I should have been doing something else. His friend introduced him to fighting, Soon, he was instantly hooked and never wanted to do anything else. And though he wasn't one for schoolwork, Sean studied something else about himself. Fighting taught him lessons he would never learn in a classroom. In an interview, he says, If I wasn't fighting, I'd have no idea what I'd be doing, he admits. But just the fact that I learned how to fight and I learned what it takes to get better and improve, I've realized that if it turned out I couldn't fight, I know now that I could get good at something else and I'd be able to make a career out of something else. Fighting taught me that, not school taking the fighting road, that's where I've learned the most. I learned to eat healthy. I learned how to treat my body right. I've learned how to do all these things to just become a better person. So there's no doubt that fighting helped me more than school ever did. While he had this feeling about school, fighting felt different for him, and he's turned it into a sensation in an amazingly short period of time. In addition to his wrestling career, he's co-hosted his own podcast called The Timbo Sugar Show, along with his friend and head trainer, Tim Welch. O'Malley's a family man who's in an open relationship with his longtime girlfriend, Dania Gonzalez, who works as a hairdresser. The couple have been together a long time, and they had a daughter named Elena at the end of 2020. He began his fighting career under the nickname Sugar, given to him by one of his MMA trainers in Montana early in his career. He first fought in Montana and then moved to fight in North Dakota. Ultimately, he fought for Legacy Fighting Alliance, where he scored a highlight knockout over David Nuzo. After that, he earned a spot on Dana White's Contender Series 2. While on DWCS, O'Malley made a huge impression when he put on a flashy display of striking in the dominant performance against Alfred Kashakian. He landed everything from spinning kicks to powerful punches, and while Kashakian hung tough, he finally went down at the 414 mark of round one. After the fight, it was announced O'Malley was the lone winner on the card to be offered a UFC contract. UFC President Dana White said, I think the kid has the style and the mentality to be a star and to win fights. I'm going to give him the opportunity, and the rest is up to him. Woo! On December 1, 2017, O'Malley had his promotional debut against Terry and Ware at the Ultimate Fighter 26 finale. In the fight between O'Malley and Ware, O'Malley started strong with low kicks and spinning kicks to the body. He gained confidence as the round went on, throwing strikes from different angles. Ware was relentless in his attacks, but O'Malley's speed and distance management gave him the upper hand. In the second round, O'Malley continued to counter and landed precise shots, but Ware refused to back down and even drew blood from O'Malley's nose. O'Malley visibly slowed down, but he still showed resilience and landed a spinning back fist. The third round saw O'Malley being more aggressive, landing crisp shots, but Ware displayed an incredible chin and kept pushing forward. It was an intense fight with both fighters trading punches until the end. O'Malley even attempted a flying triangle choke in the final seconds. The two continued to trade until the very end, where O'Malley finished with a takedown and a few elbows on top. In the end, O'Malley took two of three rounds on all three judges' cards, and he won the fight via unanimous decision. And that was how O'Malley's debut into the UFC went, and since then, he's been fighting in the UFC. O'Malley has grown so much in the UFC, 
He's had a couple of fights, and one can see how much he's improved after each and every fight. After going 7-0 in his MMA career, O'Malley fought at UFC 222 in March 2018 and won a three-round unanimous decision over Andre Sukumthath. O'Malley dominated Andre Sukumthath for the first couple of rounds, but in round three, he injured his right foot and came very close to suffering the first loss of his career. With Sukumthath pouncing on the opportunity to down an injured opponent, Sean O'Malley showed heart and fought through his injury. He was eventually given a decision win at the end of round three. Sugar! Sean! The fight earned him a fight of the night bonus. O'Malley was set to return after his recovery at UFC 229 in October 2018 against Jose Quinones. However, O'Malley was removed from the fight due to a potential US ADA violation. O'Malley would therefore only make an appearance against Marlon Vera in July 2019. However, O'Malley was again removed from the fight due to a potential US ADA violation. Ultimately, the fight against Quinones was fought at UFC 248 in Las Vegas in March 2020. I was fun to watch two years ago, and my skill level just increased so much, so, you know, I'm, I'm excited KO. that they're excited. Viral KO, like, something in me that just knows there's something about to happen. At UFC 248, O'Malley returned from two years on the sidelines, due to injury and USADA issues, to face Jose Quinones. The fight ended as quickly as it began. Sean O'Malley started with a lead leg sidekick and a front kick to the body that seated Jose Quinones. O'Malley continued his kicks while Quinones pressed forward. Quinones was caught with a right, then a high kick. An uppercut followed. Then he was thrown to the ground. O'Malley followed him down with hammer fists, and the referee dove in to stop the fight. O'Malley knocked Quinones out in two minutes and two seconds. This win earned him his first Performance of the Night award. This is very impressive of Sean, as he didn't allow his experience in the last year to affect him. Instead, he came with a blast. O'Malley looked good, man. I think that guy's been off for a couple years to come back in and look as sharp as he did. At UFC 250, Sean O'Malley opened the main card with the biggest test of his career. That came against former WEC bantamweight champ Eddie Wineland. He won the fight via one-punch knockout in the first round. The incredible thing is that no one had ever done this to Wineland. O'Malley drew him in by fainting an uppercut then dropped him out of nowhere with a nasty right hand and stopped the show at 1 minute 54 seconds of the first round. He didn't even bother to follow up, turning away as the referee rushed in, and Rogan proclaimed it was the best walk-off knockout he'd ever seen. And the result was, in my opinion, the best walk-away KO I've ever seen. Yeah. This win earned him another Performance of the Night award. By August 2020, Sean O'Malley's matchup with Marlon Vera was the co-main event. The star status had been skyrocketing to the top of the UFC bantamweight division with an undefeated 12-0 record and one highlight reel knockout after another, but it all came crashing down with a single misstep. When Sean O'Malley stepped into the ring against Marlon Vera, no one watching was thinking about the foot injury of 2018. In 2020, his foot was the second topic, his winning was the first. So most fans were envisioning another spectacular knockout like his last detonation of Eddie Wineland in the first round of their fight at UFC 250 back in June 2020. The opening round started off well for O'Malley and included several kicks to Vera's body. Then, with just under three minutes remaining in the first round, he stumbled awkwardly on his right foot. A few seconds later, another more pronounced stumble was caught by the cameras. Both of the stumbles appeared to be similar to what O'Malley had described in 2018 when he couldn't feel my whole foot. With just over 30 seconds remaining in the first round and the foot obviously bothering him, Sean O'Malley fell down. Vera capitalized, throwing a flurry of elbows and punches before referee Herb Dean intervened and stopped the fight. In this fight, O'Malley records his first and only loss in his career. And truly, it's safe to say it's all due to a leg injury and not because he was defeated by Vera. Mentally, Sean O'Malley also claimed to be an undefeated 12-0 fighter ahead of UFC 260. He'd been consistent and steadfast in his belief that his loss to Cheeto Vera the year before was not truly a loss, rather the result of a fluke injury. Uh, the way that fight ended and, it, and watching it, the fight before that happened, I was in control of that fight. I was doing what I wanted. Um, you know, he didn't take me down and elbow me. I, I, my leg completely gave out. I rolled my ankle four or five times and I was still piecing him up on the feet. I, I backed him down, had him covered up, and I went to step of back. Of course, and, the and record books him. say otherwise. At UFC 260, O'Malley faced Thomas Almeida, and the two battled it out through three rounds. 
O'Malley used strikes to knock Almeida down along the fence in the first round, but the Brazilian managed to get up and live. But O'Malley managed to take Almeida down once more in the third round, and this time, he didn't let him escape the hook. Although he had Almeida down, O'Malley didn't want to take any risks, and he landed an absolutely brutal hammer fist that put his lights out completely. With this, he won the fight via knockout and received the Performance of the Night award. In July 2021, Sean O'Malley locked horns with Chris Moutinho. They fought in a bantamweight scrap on the main card of UFC 264, which was headlined by a trilogy fight between Conor McGregor and Dustin Poirier. The event marked Moutinho's debut in the promotion. The fight was mostly a one-sided affair where O'Malley outclassed Chris for the majority of the fight and caused severe damage to him. You would agree with me, this is not a good way to debut into the UFC. During the fight, O'Malley landed 230 out of a total of 318 significant strikes with a 72% accuracy. 177 of those strikes were to the head, while the rest were to the body and legs. In response, the 31-year-old managed to land only 70 heavy blows with a 32% accuracy, and 39 of those strikes were to the head. It was incredible that Motinho lasted that long. The bout was awarded the Fight of the Night honor, and both athletes took home a bonus check of $75,000 each. O'Malley went on to UFC 269 in December 2021, where he faced Raleigh and Pava. From the opening bell, O'Malley controlled the fight till the very end. He dipped in and out with a funky style, technically outstriking the smaller Brazilian. With his jab on point and his footwork quick, O'Malley connected with a series of punches that stunned Pava late in round one. Pava took blow after blow without ever being able to fully recover. Although he remained resilient and didn't lose consciousness, referee Jason Herzog observed that the fighter had enough unanswered blows to end the battle. He won the fight via TKO in round one, and the win also earned O'Malley his fourth Performance of the Night bonus award. With so much strength and energy, O'Malley went into his next fight ready to win the fight as usual, and unfortunately, it ended in a no contest after he accidentally dipped and poked Pedro Munhoz in July 2022 at UFC 276. At UFC 280, Sean O'Malley's career took a major turn as he faced off against former champion and top challenger Petter Yan. The fight turned out to be a thriller, though the decision has been the source of much discussion since the bout. The fight was quite intense but ended in favor of O'Malley, where he was eventually given a decision win at the end of round three. In round one, Yan attempted a takedown, but O'Malley defended it well. O'Malley landed a straight left, while Yan missed with a counter left hook. Yan then executed an impressive takedown, but O'Malley defended himself effectively. In round two, O'Malley stunned Yan with a left, but Yan retaliated with a powerful left hand. Yan took O'Malley down and landed some hammer fists. O'Malley had to work hard to get back on his feet. Yan continued to be aggressive with knees to the body and executed a trip takedown. O'Malley tried a trip of his own, but got countered by Yan's right hand. Yan stayed in O'Malley's face throughout the round. In round three, Yan and O'Malley continued to exchange strikes. O'Malley landed a solid right hand, but Yan responded with a flurry of punches. Yan then took O'Malley down and controlled him on the ground. O'Malley tried to fight back, but Yan maintained his dominance until the end of the round. It was definitely an intense fight with some exciting moments. At the end of the day, the result was seen as highly controversial with many fans and fighters expressing their belief that Yan was the rightful winner. 25 out of 26 media outlets scored the fight for Yan, but of course, the record book says otherwise. The fight received the Fight of the Night bonus. Finally, on his way to victory, O'Malley won the UFC Bantamweight Championship at UFC 292 when he faced Aljamain in August 2023. One thing you need to know about O'Malley is that he is who he thinks he is, a GOAT. After he spent months talking the talk, with everything on the line, he walked the walk. He entered the octagon to a raucous ovation and delivered on the hype, flooring 135-pound champion and strong favorite Aljamain Sterling early in the second round, finishing off a stunning title win in Boston. After a fairly even first round, Sterling rushed into an exchange in the first minute of the second round and paid for it dearly. As O'Malley caught him with a perfectly timed counter right hand, and followed up with vicious ground and pound to put Sterling's reign to an end and blow the roof off the arena. Sean knocked the champion out 51 seconds into the second round. You would agree this is an impressive win for a title match. If you like this video, do let me know in the comments, and obviously, leave your likes too. Don't forget to share and subscribe. Until next time, do take care and stay safe.